pirates attacked the wrong US Navy ship and then this happened. No idea how you mistake a US Navy ship and attack the wrong one. This is going to be an interesting video to check out. Can't wait to get into it. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button down below. And if you want to help support me further, I do have a Patreon. Link is in the description. Let's jump into this and see what we got. Have you ever heard of the pirates of Somalia? Yep. The group of people who wield not just cutlasses and pistols, but power and chaos in equal measure. Oh, yeah. But imagine a scenario <laughs> where these pirates try to attack the mighty ships of the US Navy. You know, those that are armed to the teeth and equipped with state-of-the-art technology, often exceeding 300 meters in length. Mad. With Bro, if you're telling me the pirates attacked a ship that looked like this, Bro, what? Are they all blind? Like, what are they doing? How do you accidentally attack this, bro? <laughs> the capacity of displacing 100,000 tons? What would happen when these modern pirates try to mess with the deadliest uh, ships mad. of they're the US mad. Navy fleet? Don't underestimate the pirates, though. They've long evolved from what's depicted in the tales of the infamous Caribbean pirates and the legendary feats of figures like Blackbeard and right. Captain Kidd. Yeah, but they can't attack a U.S. Navy ship. Like, they, they might have, like, advanced and got a bit better with their equipment and stuff. But, bro, you, U.S. Navy ship? You, yeah, okay. Today's pirates are the real deal. Right. And if you think they don't pack a punch, you might be wrong. Join us as we delve into the gripping account of how a notorious band of Somali pirates set their sights on the MV Maersk, Alabama. Are they mad? We'll soon discuss what happened when the U.S. Navy deployed the USS Howard Destroyer and how it took the United States and several other nations to negotiate with the Somali pirates for the release of the ship. Leaving what? You telling me they had to negotiate for the release of the ship? What a U.S. Navy ship! Yes, to wonder yet again, do pirates actually stand a chance? <laughs> how did piracy start in Somalia? Somalia, in the Horn of Africa, faced a lot of challenges. Wars, poverty, and no law and order led to piracy off its coast. In the 1990s, Somalia had a big war after their president, Siad Barre, was removed. Right. Without a strong government, groups with guns started trying to take over. Foreign boats took advantage of this mess. They stole fish and dumped waste in Somalia's waters. Yo. So local fishermen turned into pirates to protect their waters and earn money. Yeah, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I would be mad as well if I was them. Um, don't be wasting your wars and taking... Bro, I, I'd be... I, yeah, I'd be fuming. By the 2000s, the world was watching Somali pirates. They had big guns and would take big ships hostage, asking for a lot of money to release them. These pirates used small, quick boats and would often keep ship crews as hostages. Getting money for releasing these ships and crews became a big business. Wow. Back in the so that's how it started with like the waste and stuff and it, it, it first started like them protecting They was like no don't put the waste in don't take our fish right fair enough But then they seen like how much money they could get and it, it just progressed into them just being pirates man Day pirates lived on their ships But modern pirates like the ones in Somalia have bases on land and used fast boats for their attacks Right they use guns more than swords now they want to scare people, steal things, and sometimes they use marooning. Huh? What's marooning? It's a pirate punishment where they leave someone on a deserted island. It's a way to punish those who pirates think are causing trouble. The person left behind would have a bit of food, some water, and a gun. This way, if things got too tough, they had a way out. What? The fight against piracy. On one side stands the mighty U.S. Navy a symbol of naval supremacy, armed with cutting edge technology and a mission to protect global maritime interests. On the other side, an elusive and cunning adversary emerges, pirates. These audacious- Bro, there's no match. <laughs> like, bro, if you're gonna tell me there's a match between the US Navy and pirates, nah. Just outlaws, fueled by desperation and the lure of untold fortunes navigate treacherous waters with their nimble vessels, striking fear into the hearts of seafarers. Yo, they blow that up As the second. US Navy deploys its sophisticated arsenal and strategic prowess to combat this elusive menace, an intricate game unfolds. With every encounter, 
the stakes escalate. In the face of the grave threat posed by pirates to maritime trade and the safety of seafarers, the U.S. Navy has devised a comprehensive approach to tackle this age-old scourge head-on. Oh, yeah. Central to their strategy is the implementation of non-lethal deterrents, which play a pivotal role in mitigating the risks when encountering such threats. Wait, did you say non-lethal? Did you say non-lethal? When you got pirates coming at you, you're gonna try and be non-lethal. But why non-lethal weapons? Yeah! Why not just use full force against the pirates? What? These are questions up for debate. Regardless, the US Navy strives to deter and dissuade pirates from engaging in acts of violence and piracy, thus safeguarding the well-being of those traversing the high seas. Amongst the methods employed, long-range acoustic devices, or LRADs, are one of the most popular. LRAD systems emit powerful, focused sound waves, which are basically pain-inducing audible beams. A oh. sonic weapon produces a high-pitched noise that is higher than the tolerance level of an average human being, oh. deafening the victims and preventing them from coming any closer. The Mighty Water Cannon is another widely utilized non-lethal offering an effective deterrent against piracy. This Bro, I don't get I don't get that. Your ship is being attacked. Why you do it? Why you why I don't get it. Why not? I'm so confused. What if your ship is being attacked, bro, by pirates with guns? Why even do non-lethal? Like you're technically like in a battle. Do you know what I'm saying? Powerful device projects a forceful stream of water, creating an impenetrable barrier that dissuades pirates from boarding merchant vessels. Moreover, oh, wow. the water cannon's ability to swiftly fill pirate boats hampers their mobility and restricts their maneuvering capabilities. Plus, we all know what happens when water fills up in a boat. True, true. Other more powerful methods include stun grenades, electric secure fences, laser devices, and dazzle guns, which are certainly non-lethal, but extremely painstaking to say the least. The U.S. Navy under attack. During its service, the USS Nicholas FFG-47 encountered a dramatic incident involving an attack by pirates. Right. In April 2010, while operating in the waters of the Indian Ocean, the frigate found itself engaged in a tense confrontation with Somali pirates. Don't tell me they do non-lethal, bro. Like, like the way I'm seeing this is like America. This is like America dealing with a bug problem. Do you know what I mean? Just whack it away. I don't know. Spray some water at it. <laughs> Flick it, bro. Like what? <laughs> what? The incident unfolded when the USS Nicholas detected a suspected pirate vessel, referred to as a skiff, in the vicinity. Okay. The frigate's crew swiftly mobilized and initiated appropriate defensive measures. As the pirate skiff attempted to flee, the USS Nicholas, acting in accordance with its mission to combat piracy, commenced pursuit. Oh, in a this remarkable is, this is display of skill and precision, the USS Nicholas managed to intercept the pirate skiff. As the situation escalated, the pirates aboard the skiff opened fire on the frigate, initiating an exchange of gunfire. What? The crew of the USS Nicholas, well trained and resolute, effectively defended their vessel against the pirate attack. The engagement resulted in the apprehension of several pirates, while others were forced to abandon their skiff and flee. My. The successful defense of the USS Nicholas showcased the ship's robustness and the effectiveness of its crew in combating piracy threats. Right. This incident highlighted the lack of sophistication among most pirates, who often make irrational decisions and target vessels larger than they can handle. Another notable attack made on the U.S. Navy by pirates occurred. I don't get these pirates, though. Like, I totally understand them attacking like cargo ships and stuff, right? With with good like loot on. You know what I'm saying? But like, what, what what are they doing? Attacking U.S. Navy ships? <laughs> what what are they doing, bro? Another notable attack made on the U.S. Navy by pirates occurred in April of 2009, when the USS Bainbridge was involved in the rescue of the MV Maersk, Alabama. Right. See, the I understand MV them getting Maersk, this. The MV Maersk, Alabama, a U.S. flagged container ship, was hijacked by Somali pirates in the Indian Ocean. The USS Bainbridge, an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer, subsequently responded to the distress call and reached the scene. 
During the incident, the pirates held the ship's captain, Richard Phillips, hostage on a lifeboat. Negotiations with the pirates were initiated, but as the situation grew increasingly tense, the Navy made the decision to take action. Oh, wow. Several Navy SEAL snipers from the USS Bainbridge conducted a daring nighttime operation, successfully eliminating three pirates and rescuing Captain Phillips unharmed. Wait, they got him? Wait, 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 yo! So they got snipers to aim in on the ship here? The captain was in here, I'm guessing, with um, some pirates, and they killed the pirates in here with snipers, and then got... Bro, that's mad! Successfully eliminating three pirates and rescuing Captain Phillips unharmed. What? This operation, known as Operation Neptune Spear, showcased the skill and precision of the U.S. Navy encountering piracy threats, wow. even in dire encounters. Wow. It's that was a tough situation. The United States has been fortunate to possess strong capabilities in the fight against piracy. But other nations encounter more significant obstacles when dealing with this maritime menace. Factors such as resource disparities, geographical considerations, and varying levels of international support contribute to a less advantageous situation for many countries in their efforts to combat pirates. U.S. Navy Capabilities Oh, we know these. Let's delve into the prowess of U.S. Navy ships, Mad. which, interestingly, some pirates believe they can challenge. To state the obvious, the U.S. Navy boasts the world's largest and most formidable fleet. The Zumwalt class is the pinnacle of surface combatants, showcasing innovation in naval capabilities. What is the USS that? USS Zumwalt, the headliner of this class, is engineered for diverse missions from deterrence to sea control. These destroyers reflect what? the U.S. Navy's vision for the future. They're not just for today's challenges, but are crafted to integrate emerging technologies and adapt to new mission scenarios. That so, just looks so strange. Like, imagine you're on that beach right there, or like the, the coast, and you're seeing that come in. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not seeing things right. Like, what, what, what is this? Speaking of advancement, the Zumwalt will soon incorporate the Pentagon's common hypersonic glide body. This system, soaring at Mach 5 or more, can obliterate targets just with its astonishing velocity. On the other hand, the Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer holds its place among the world's elite ships. Commissioned in 1991, it remains a linchpin in the Navy's fleet. This These destroyers badass. come equipped with an arsenal that can deter a spectrum of threats, from aerial to subsurface. Pirates even thinking of confronting an Arleigh Burke class would be courting disaster. Bro, the, honestly, like, if they think they can take on any of these, they are... <laughs> Bro, I don't know what's going on in their heads. Especially given its Aegis combat system that can track, target, and destroy threats swiftly and effectively. The sheer power of these missiles can neutralize threats in mere seconds. Pirates considering challenging such a force? That'd be a grave miscalculation. Yeah. But for some reason, pirates still end up attacking U.S. Navy ships. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Why do you think these pirates try and attack such yeah. huge vessels? And what do you think about using non-lethal weapons? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, like, I thought the video was going to tell us the reason why they are attacking because I want to know. You guys got to let me know in the comments. Why do you actually think they are attacking and why do you think they can? Because, honestly, bro, like, it don't make sense to me how the pirates can look at the ship and be like, yeah, we can take that on. Like, what? And non-lethal. Bro, I ain't going to lie, right? If you're being attacked by pirates that's using weapons... Why use non-lethal? Just get just get rid of them. They're attacking you with weapons. You know what I'm saying? A united front against piracy. In the ongoing battle against piracy, prominent organizations such as the International Maritime Bureau have emerged to play vital roles. The IMB serves as a crucial monitoring and documentation body, providing essential information on piracy incidents worldwide to governments and authorities. Additionally, the United Nations has taken proactive steps by establishing the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, 
which sets forth a comprehensive legal framework for addressing piracy. Oh, yeah. The UNCLOS mandates international cooperation among nations in apprehending and prosecuting pirates, regardless of their nationality or the location of their criminal activities. Right. One notable force in the fight against piracy is the Combined Task Force 150, or CTF-150. Operating under the Combined Maritime Forces, CTF-150 is a multinational naval task force with a primary mission to enhance maritime security and stability in the Gulf of Aden, the Arabian Sea, and Indian Ocean. Yo, the pi- I ain't gonna lie, the pirates are so lucky. The pirates are so lucky that the US are deciding to do non-lethal. Like, they actually are. Because they, they will just wipe them out just like that, bro. Its focus extends to countering terrorism, preventing illicit activities including piracy and smuggling, and promoting a safe and secure maritime environment. Remember that the fight against piracy is a collaborative endeavor, with nations contributing their naval assets and personnel on a rotational basis to form this task force. Therefore, this multinational coalition can focus on conducting patrols, surveillance, and interdiction operations in the designated areas. The task force comprises warships, aircraft, and personnel from various countries, promoting international cooperation and coordination. Right. Additionally, those close partnerships are maintained with organizations like the European Union Naval Force and NATO. Of course, the U.S. Navy plays a significant role in this collective effort. Wait, what's the difference between the European Naval Force and NATO? I, I, I thought it would be the same thing. To combat piracy, yet again, demonstrating its commitment to maritime security. Because I, I would have thought the European Naval Force is a part of NATO. Because it... I know NATO's got countries outside of Europe, but isn't most countries in Europe in NATO? I, I, I could be wrong. I, I don't really know. I'm not going to lie. In your opinion, how do you think the collaboration between these organizations can be further strengthened? And what do you think about using non-lethal weapons against pirates? Yeah. Should we use full force instead? Share your tactics, I ideas, think or they thoughts should. with us in the comments section below. Like, you're being attacked with weapons, bro, and you're spraying water at them, right? <laughs> just, just get rid of them. You, you're being attacked with weapons. Like, I totally understand if, like, the pirates was attacking with sticks. Do you know what I'm saying? Then sure. But they're be you're being attacked with guns. Use guns, right? Like, what? Because, like, if you're going to spray water at them and they get away, they're just going to come back and do it again. All in all... Through active sense. participation in multinational operations such as the Combined Task Force 150, the U.S. Navy plays a crucial role in deterring and countering pirate activities in vulnerable regions. Their commitment is exemplified by the deployment of naval assets, like the USS Howard, to monitor and protect hijacked ships like the Faena. Collaborating with international partners, the U.S. Navy demonstrates unwavering determination in protecting global trade and ensuring the well-being of seafarers. Our deepest respect and gratitude go out to these courageous men and women who bravely serve in the ongoing battle against pirates. Their selflessness and unwavering dedication deserve our highest admiration. Yo, they, they, ha they got a lot of respect for following the orders of non-lethal. Because I, I guarantee you there's going to be so many people on that ship that's going to be like, yo, why don't we just do lethal and, and, ju and just get rid of them? You know what I'm saying? If you like this video, make sure to give it a like. That was interesting though. You, you guys gotta let me know what you guys think in the comment section. But that was a good video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys wanna check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.